Hi there guys, as promised, we've uh, arrived at Earthship Brighton. We're on holiday in, this, uh, in the area and decided we'd come and have a quick look at it. I'll make a little short video for you on this one. Uh, it's not going to be as long as in-depth as the last one. pointed out most of the main features of these Earthships when uh, I did my Earthship 5 video. I just wanted to show you another example of something that was a little bit bigger, a little bit more uh, practical in terms of sort of living space. Uh, this one is currently used by uh, Stanmer Organics. Um, as, uh, I think they're using it as an office or visitor centre at the moment. It's an organic farm um, in Brighton. So uh, without further ado, let's have a look at the site. And here we are. This is the site of Earthship Brighton. The white van man over there, I think he's doing some decorating at the minute. Unfortunately, the tours aren't running uh, until September, um, but we thought we'd come down and have a quick look ourselves anyway, since we know a lot of what's going on already. It's a nice sort of opportunity to give you a, a brief tour. Some of the periphery items here, a little fire circle there. That's a hand washing station for the, uh, the compost toilet over here. Composting toilets are uh, exactly what you'd expect, all the, the waste drops down into a composting bed underneath. You can see and sawdust and everything. You wouldn't normally have to absolutely have to go for a composting toilet design. There's no reason why you couldn't use a, a more traditional flushing toilet to ensure that uh, the waste for those are uh, it's all being filtered through your black water beds as we showed at uh, the earth ship in Fife make sure that we're processing all our waste properly before returning it to the environment a wind turbine over here now the uh, the Brighton earth ships more of a traditional design based around the Taos project so it's primarily using solar power. Um, not ideal for this climate. Uh, I believe they've actually struggled a little bit with uh, ensuring that they're getting the right amount of power to this place. Um, but that can easily be solved as shown by the, uh, the five project by changing to something like um, a water-based power supply. And here we go. So start up here around the roof. There's all the solar panels, providing most of the power. As you can see from the design of this roof, it's designed to filter all the water. So it runs down these channels and into here. Got the gravel there to filter out a lot of the major rubbish. And there'll be another filter underneath this. Um, all the water is then channeled over here. This is uh, where the water is, is stored itself ready for use in the project. I think this is an absolutely beautiful building. Very, very cool. You can see here these stepped sides here gives you an idea of the, uh, the wrapped earth tyre designs. The way that they're stacked and then faced up. And then you've got the twin greenhouses here at the front. windows sloped to meet the angle of the winter sun ensuring that we get uh, as much of the energy as possible filtered into the uh, into the greenhouse like the airship Fife uh, the uh, plants in this uh, in front of this greenhouse here act as uh, the grey water processing ready to filter it back through into the house use in uh, toilets. The interesting design here, got the sort of uh, circular pod on one side and then the main uh, strip of the earth ship there. And again this step siding here giving you a real good idea how it's all constructed. From old tyres rammed with earth, you can see one of them there. All faced up with the uh, concrete. 
and cover up. And there uh, on the top, these uh, tilted skylights serve for ventilation purposes. So they're weighted on one side to help it um, get easier to uh, tilt them up from the ground. The cables. Spiral channel here, just filtering all the water around the outside of uh, this cone shaped structure. Again, bringing all the water down into that gutter, it'll run all the way along to the other side. It's filtered out, put into the water storage tanks. As you can see, with this being primarily solar design, there's an awful lot of solar panels on this. A lot more than you'd need in a place with a lot more sun, like in towers, where that's their primary source. We've got the flat ones there, and we've got the sloped ones there angled at the winter sun. So unfortunately, uh, tours aren't actually on at the minute. So we're just able to have a look around the outside. I'm not allowed to take you inside, unfortunately. A little bit of gas supply there. And there's no reason that without uh, a little bit of tweaking, you couldn't make this uh, a lot more sustainable than it already is. Uh, now, I believe behind here is probably what you'll find is the battery bank. Would make most sense, having it nice and close to uh, where the solar panels are. Yeah, I believe behind these you'll probably find a big bank of car batteries used to store a lot of the energy ready to be used. There's power cables going in there, further uh, backing up my theory. A big thick power cable there now, up to an outdoor socket. So yeah, I'm pretty positive that's uh, where the um, power is going to be stored. And um, these are very cool bottle walls. You take uh, two bottles or jars, uh, cut the necks off them, and then uh, tape them together and use them as bricks. Again, further reducing construction costs, the amount of cement that needs to be used, and uh, also using up old waste, which is the best thing about this. It's all about reusing and utilising materials that you already have. A close look there, you can see how the uh, bottles have been cut in half and taped together. All in all, very cool little project. Workshop there, we do a lot of the cutting and preparation for the construction itself. You can see there these large banks of earth built up all around it. Provides insulation, keep it nice and warm, reduce the heat loss as much as possible. These guys offer lots of uh, different courses on various different aspects of permaculture, uh, including remodeling old buildings and you know earth chip construction principles, all stuff like that. Not going to keep you too much longer. Get towards the end of uh, time here. Obviously don't want to disturb this uh, gentleman over there doing his, uh, his decorating work. You can see there, this is the grey water processing bed, just inside. Now a lot of these seem to be flowering plants, but there's uh, no reason you can't use food plants for these things. So we've got tomatoes there, which is very cool. A bit closer so you can see. Tomato plants. All in all, very, very cool little project. Come out on the side, see if we can have a quick look inside from a distance. How beautiful is that? Now, can anyone really say that this is like living in a cave? I don't think so. 
beautiful. Anyway, that is Earthship Brighton. Hope you enjoyed your brief tour. Hope it's inspired you to come and have a look yourselves. Maybe even uh, look to start building something. These projects don't have to be going back to the caves and living in, uh, you know, living in um, poverty, I suppose you could say. You can have all the modern comforts you could ever want. Anyway, thank you for your time, guys. Hope you enjoyed the short tour. Namaste.